dynamic between blue and red are. Again, quoting Coach Zico yesterday, red side should be the winning side. And oh no, Fireflux is there. Fireflux might get the winning draft. <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat, we are, st are starting to see bands that are pretty much uh, uh, in the ordinary. We do have quite a lot of bands that can pretty much go on the way. When it comes down to all the uh, probably win conditions that we want to look out for, I don't think that they would want to go for any marksman band this early. Junglers is probably what I want to look out for. I'm expecting at some point maybe Lancelot to be a consideration, but Phobia, so we know for a fact that Team Evo are setting up for a first pick one one, which is great for FIMP because now they don't have to pass out the Valentina. Coach Bad Gal Seth waving that finger. No, 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 not in my house. But just to say, they open up the Kaja and this Diggy Band, this Diggy Band, what it says is. Apex might pick up the Mino. I can yep. see it coming, right? I was gonna bring that up. Valentina and Mino are looking like super hot picks right now, and especially with Valentina being able to steal Divine Judgment to add on that extra layer, we still could say, all right, you know what? Let's take a safer route. Let's go with the Faramis instead with the Call Altar to make it all work. So pretty much what they would want to look out for is more towards like a team fight composition, but we're still pretty much on the blind side. They don't really have a very general idea, what, or rather I don't have a general idea as to what they're really going to be looking out for. But just based on the fact that they went out for a ban onto the Diggy, they might pretty much just play all on team fight front to back. I'm expecting that as well. Last six seconds here, all of the Fireflux and Community, all three of them, and Team Evo, two of their games are on second pick. So it's a very hot standing between the two. Now, FIMP, as much as we would like to see them start setting up for the Minotaur, revealing it early may not necessarily be the play. There's still some hot picks. For an example, they want to bait out the Faramis from the side of Team Evo. But Team Evo, don't fall for it at all. The Glue and Valentina goes over to FIMP with Redrin, as well as Yu Zong being the hot picks here for Team Evo. I'm wondering if it's worth it to pick up the carry here. If not the carry, maybe the Claude. They want to give Sunshine something good, but then again, the Beatrix also open. No marksmen were banned save for 1-1. One, one. I'm thinking maybe Fireflux might keep it up for the second phase. They might pick up their right. marksmen in the second phase. The second phase would probably make a good idea for me. Unless they really do not want Team Evo to snag away or ban out the carry. Because right now, have, looking at the fact that uh, Team Evo is very much frontline heavy for now with the Fredrin as well as the Yujong, they probably need an idea as to how they would really want to burst that frontline down. Personally for me, I think if they want to do exactly that, Beatrix is going to be great, but instead they're going to go with the carry, knowing with how tanky the lineup from Team EVO already currently is. My main issue with this is the fact that Yutong is going to chase her down. But that's just one. So I think given that 50-50, Coach Bad Yasef consulted the young Sunshine, consulted their marksman and said, you know what, are you okay with that? Are you okay just the Yuzhong? Mm -hmm. As long as you cover up, Coach, as long as you cover up. So that's what we can expect here in the bands. Very likely we'll be expecting a support room from the side of uh, Fire Plus Impunity. That way they will be able to bolster the defenses of Carry as much as possible to keep him alive in the fight as much as possible, right? You wouldn't want to have your, uh, you, as a team, right? You wouldn't want Yuzhong to just jump in onto the Carry when he still have got a Cult Altar on him. I agree with that. I can definitely agree with that. I would expect first, consider getting rid of the Farsa, right? Artillery mages are a little annoying to deal with, but instead they're going to go with the Farmers oh. first, get rid of the insurance policy from the side of Team Evo, but it's not the ult that they want to steal. At the end of the day, Minotaur could go to either side. As is, I think the, there's no more room for a roamer for Team Evo. They already have the Kaja. So they're still setting up Fireflux right. Immunity. But there's one thing I have to note here. It looks like... Firefox and Punita are happy to just steal the Black Dragon form in the Kaja. That's it. All right? Mm -hmm. Looking at how Team Evo has no mid lane hero just yet. How about a quote from their mid laner? We will try our best in the group stage. We believe in our teamwork and hard work. If we get a good draft, we can do well. And so far, they're doing all right. Uh, I'd say closer to good than anything. Considering that Todok is going to be playing today, I was, you know, maybe my mindset is thinking, what if they go a little bit wild? And I said Minotaur is on both sides, and obviously the Roamer has already been selected, but have you considered throwing Fredrin in towards that EXP side, throwing Minotaur back into the jungle, and maybe holding on to a mid lane Yuzong? Like a lane bully. Exactly. I'm really going out of the box here. If you're going Dark Horse <laughs> style and we just need a sweep just to make it a knockout, I'm with you. That, that, that's possible.
you know, as crazy as it is to not let 20 August play first, why not? Right, but well, that's why I'm thinking they've got to really start throwing something at the wall and see what it sticks here. Melissa going to get banned out by the side of FIMP, coming back over to Team Evo. They've already gotten rid of the Franco. They're probably mm -hmm. looking for something else to kind of stop the overall, uh, stop the overall glue from getting in towards that back line. But how exactly is that going to be possible, right? A lot of their abilities are very much single target. It doesn't seem like they have a lot of options uh, when it comes down to looking at Apex 47's uh, current hero pool. Not a lot of left out heroes, right? Where Kaja has already been picked out, Franco already been taken away. If you're looking at more of a lockdown basis, Lolita is definitely one of the things that they can look out for, especially oh, since... No. Especially since that it's not a marksman picked out yet, they still have some flexibility to play onto the last pick. Abstract, you mentioned the Lolita. That might be the consolation prize for Fireflux now, given that coach Flashonian, uh, their analyst Bumblebee, who was a former player for the Team Laos team uh, in Sea Games, they said, you know what? We see you coming, Apex. We know what you're up to. Take that Mino out of here. Hmm, what does that leave FIMP to work with? This early Diggy ban as well has been hinted many, many times that Minotaur was probably going to be a priority, but not picking up within the very first phase itself, trying to set it up for this very first pick in the second phase. That leaves FIMP with a couple of options. It's hard to call Lolita right now, but even, oh, oh, wow, an Atlas, a debut what? pick, finally. Atlas has been sitting right in the middle of the stage all this time, and now he makes it into the <laughs> Land of Dawn, finally. Oh, so, well, this is this is a good secondary pick. I mean, we called Lolita consolation prize, but mm -hmm. this is pretty good. They, okay, so for now, Team Evo is working out onto the Farsa, so they're not nece uh, necessarily too concerned about the fact that the Valentina can take that Farsa's feathered airstrike away. No, the thing is, they were, uh, when it comes down to Fireflux Impunity, they already have got the Atlas when they want to look for pick-off. If they want to go for double pick-off from, uh, from the Kaja plus their own Atlas, it will be tough. Ooh. I like this. This is this is another answer to the Atlas because they understood they're going in deep. So why not we oblige? Mm. You want to come pull us over? Get through the Zaman Force first. Really interesting. They really want to make sure that at least for this to dominate this lane, right? Because if we're talking about overall, we we mentioned it yesterday. Coverage of damage, right? So much magic damage, and as well, it pairs well with the Kaja at the same time. Do know that it does seem as though Team Evil is just waiting for the point in time where Fireflux oh! Impunity. Picks out the Atlas since we have we can expect Apex to actually play the Minzatar. Well, this that, is genius. That being said, ain't no Minzatar here, so that Harith, you can expect it to go rough shot, go unsupervised as the small child that he is. Looking at the, the uh, predictions, wow, the world is split! Except for maybe Turkey. 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 <laughs> of course. Of course, right? Understandable. As you will. Now, that being said, I like the Bane pickup here because just between the Kyrie and the Valentina, there wasn't much burst. There wasn't enough damage. So this Bane here, I'm not so sure if he's going to build it hybrid or at least much more sustained the way Kaltizi did earlier uh, in the groups. But I hope there's much damage here. I want that mm -hmm. uh, deadly catch to truly be deadly. I just don't want it to be a catch. Magic, right? That's right. Magic. Or even physical. I don't care. I think, oh, okay. I think physical is the way to go this time. Clock of Destinies, it's going to take too long for you to scale. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I was worried about disengage and they found a way to disengage. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go as we land into the land of dawn between Team Evo Welcome versus Fire Flux Impunity. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Oh, look at that skid. Bargain Hunter oh. on this stone. And yes, the Rune Sentinel oh. skin making its debut here That's in the hands of Apex 47. Last we saw him play this in M4. Boy, oh boy, was that a revelation. But now, nothing out of the ordinary. It's a man to man. Uh, laning phase here. The, the, the laners are sticking to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. Nothing too out of the ordinary, oh. of mm. course, but you can definitely see that they want to walk up a little bit. Wait, hold on. Hello? Okay. Oh, okay. Doesn't seem like uh, Five Flash Impunity would want to get into this fight. Evo, they're wanting to go for a Whoa. lot more of the early game tempo and momentum in order to drive Five Flash Impunity away. Kazooie with the steel, you saw that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it, it looked initially like they wanted to do a fast four, but instead they just wanted to make sure they had lethal priority. This means that your name is going to have a slight EXP lead, and especially for Bane, he's going to show up here on top side. Hello! Now Kira, deadly catch down to Opa, bri almost bring him down, but Opa is just surviving oh based on the shot residue, and the only one minute and 20 seconds, first blood down onto Opa. He 
missed out the opportunity to weave in an auto attack while he was already slowed by the ale. And if he proc to Shaw Residue, he might have been able to survive because Alien was a little far away. And maybe he could have gotten a battle spell, but at the very least, that's going to be first blood over and a lot of pressure on that top side. So keep in mind, the FIMP, this is going to be a team composition that's designed about wombo comboing with each other. Good um, news, bad news, it's that's going to be at least uh, Oprah coming back in time for this first turtle coming up in about 10 seconds. Bad news is, Firefox already going in with a 1k gold lead. You can call it 1k here, especially since you're looking at a Bane. And I'm thinking this, this Bane is, is very definitely different from Carl Teasy's. A 1500 gold economy on the Cura based on the fact that they pretty much brought down all the energy turrets at the top. But in the meantime, as what? Well, we are immediately going to be looking at the whole Fib running down onto Team Evo as Opa was just really pretty much hoping to get himself away from everything against Jura. But the Shah Residue is just stacking up. He's still gonna be alive. Numinem jumps in from behind and he's still managed to bring everyone down. As Aki, as our well, Numinem is gonna be left 2v2. Alien tries to back himself off. Numinem and Aki still wants to hope for the best for their team as the mid lane duel is still gonna be dragging out as long as we can. Alien goes on to the split split. Kazu joins in oh. and Apex is just pretty much gonna be here as Numinem goes down. The entirety of 5 plus Impunity reigns in that fight. Scrappy, messy, and all the more favorable for Fireflux. Mm -hmm. Fireflux, even though they could, they, they tried to escalate it. Personally, for me, they need to be a little bit more disciplined. Calm down for a second here, Kazuo. Oh, a bit hard! Right on top of Kazu! As they immediately bring the mid laner down, definitely helping Team Evil's situation. Is this not what you were saying? That you needed to take it slow? Yeah. And then they overextended. They weren't done. I mean, technically, Kazuo, he was greeting out. He had the flicker, he had an opportunity to use it. Didn't, didn't want to, was willing to die for it, and didn't expect to be followed up upon by your name, which is a little unfortunate. Oh, fun fact, since Atlas is making his debut, it is of Greek origin, that name, and it means to carry. I oh. wonder if Apex is going to carry Fireflux to a victory here, given this, I don't know, messy start, because now they're going to be pressuring bottom lane. Here comes the Z-Force. Immediately, Sunshine's HP is not looking good. Biston did have to use his summon force, but in the meantime, Time, looking all the way up north, we can pretty much tell that uh, Fib is trying to put more pressure onto the EXP lane, forcing Opa to run it down with his ultimate. Top to bottom, that's a DD. Double disengage unless Alien's looking for more. Nope. 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 No dice here, but what is this? Mm -hmm. Second turtle coming up. Yep, second turtle coming up, but the way that Alien is managing this wave is great. They're trying to show that Fimp ain't some limp bisticates here. They're going to be able to walk away from the time oh. being. But again, humble oh. components, I'm seeing the ultimates. Alien starting the fight off onto your name. Pretty much it's just going to be stick right on top of your name. Oh. With, of course, with the ultimate. As the fatal lanes connect, Nune flicks himself away and will be able to successfully disengage. But unfortunately, Kazu joins in with a black dragon oh. form. Whittles him down. And Fimp still even running it down to open. Doesn't seem like they would want to let him run away. The petrifier is pretty much used. Opa completely under fire, even under the turret's nose. Oh, in the what? meantime, Beston loses his fight against Sunshine down in the bottom. The Turkish take everything from that turtle into the purple down bottom. They are barreling on forward, way ahead of Evo. About 2k, 2.5k now. How did Biston lose his 1v1 against Sunshine there? Something must have happened. Biston might have taken a really terrible trade. And you can see that even Sunshine flickered for it. So he really capitalized on it. Quantum step? Question mark. But now 3v2 down bottom. Apex 47 and Sunshine understands that most of the members from inside of EVO is pretty much gone. It's the dark side in their map. And they at least managed to get away completely unscathed. I understand what EVO is doing here. They're protecting their last safe lane. They lost the XP lane mm -hmm. tier 1 and down bottom is their last chance to give Biston that ramp up into the mid game. He already has his Calamity Reaper. Oh, Calamity Reaper purchase is going to allow him to get a lot more damage in these fights. Oh. oh, no name, big ultimate and of course follow it up. Oh, oh three man fatal length but unfortunately not a lot of followers are going to be joined up here. The Daddy Cash is going to be tossed up from the side of Cura and he brings new name down. Oh, but joins in the mid fight and tries to go over to the back line but Alien is oh. going to be holding down the rest of the three from the back and effectively helping them to disengage. But Evil still have four and they might actually just want to make, take this time to take over the opponent's jungle. Is that not unfortunate? On two levels. Number one, the damage from Firefox BD came a little too late. Mm -hmm. And number two, 
alien couldn't bite down on anybody. I saw him trying to get that split split on like two or three different people, and they're like, nobody just wouldn't bite. Oh, wait! Oh, it's Bellin has tracked down! But unfortunately, both of the members coming from the side of Team Evil is not going to go down just yet. Fimp, as well as Evil, they would want to be committal, but it just sometimes doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's all about the combo components, right? The execution is going to be extremely key here. You got to take a step back, breathe a little bit. For FIMP, it's all about making sure that once you find that initial catch, that you can follow it up with specifically Cura, and then things will start falling into place. But on the opposite side, Evo side, especially for Opera, it's about disrupting, trying to stagger them as much as they can. Now, it's a little difficult, and yes, they do have a couple of purifies, and hopefully that's going to be able to turn the tides, but at the end of the day, it's about timing in execution, not just for FIMP, but also for EVO. Between the two of them right now, I think Firefox Impunity is still ahead of the game, mm -hmm. maybe a step and a half ahead, given that they just traded that last turtle for a turret down bottom. So you can expect that Bistone is going to find farm elsewhere. I'd say as long as there's a three or four man presence in, in, in the gold lane here in the bottom, then this is how he wants to go. But that aside, I think it's smart for Firefox to send Sunshine down there to take down that tier one and then eventually it's the long lane from the first lord i don't know if they saw this coming and eventually Fim didn't even care about the bottom lane and just dies the timing for unless you go down to go for the defense kaja is nowhere to be seen as well as harif so at least is in Fim's idea they can't see anyone from the side of evil except for the frederick and the fasa that was last seen in the middle and this is the first time in a while in the groups at least of msc that we've seen a dive against a dive comp mm -hmm. yeah and it's great but the problem is that at least with atlas but he's able to table flip it so easily, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know when exactly he's going to be able to use his ultimate to completely turn that fight around. And the question is whether Opper, if he comes out too early from that black dragon form, he could be in a lot of danger and bait the rest of his team into these fights. But notice that even the deadly catch is utilized Whoa. to chunk down tier twos. The tier two went down so quickly, and Evil didn't really have a response oh. to that. As we see the conceal, and they oh. oh. two man, fatal leg, full down with Aki, dropping down with a, with a feather. The airstrike, but it doesn't seem like he will be able to do much with that from that point onwards. Alien went over to the back lines and Opa dragging around, flying around the Blood Dragon form. Fimp eventually have to make all the way back and retreat. Oh wait! Doesn't seem like the fight is going to be ended just yet. Opa finds himself in right in the face of Cura as he makes his retreat. Alien not able to land down any of those goos onto the front lines of Evo. But fight continues on. Alien can't go down and Fimp may want to look at another avenue. I like the term, all those glues. Globules are very difficult to say, so glues are going to be the way to go. At the end of the day, these neutral objectives are going to be hard, especially for FIMP. They don't have a majority of their ultimate, big ticket ultimates just yet. Kira just got his deadly catch, and now he's waiting for Apex, who just got it online. And Apex threatening with a single Fatal man, Fatal Links, I suppose. But they would want to bring down your name oh. as soon as possible, so no more retribution from the side of Team Evil. Fib takes the Lord that easily with no challenge. That was a little bit awkward. It, it kind of felt like Team Evil kind of let it happen. They looked at him and was like, sorry, buddy. Just <laughs> now, full on retreat. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's just uh, a byproduct of the fact that, yes, Firefox Immunity is very ultra-reliant, but Evo is as well. Here's how the 50-50 both teams playing the dive comp. You'll see that the team that has the better micro, or rather the better macro, will do much better. And then right now you're seeing that that's Firefox Infinity as they're barreling on ahead. 5.5k ahead, 10 minutes in. Oh my god. <laughs> Alien. Look at him, he's just taking the damage. Wait. Oh, that is very premature when it comes down to the feathered airstrike. Kira is forced to use the deadly catch as well, but none of the ultimates amounted to not, uh, anything. Here we'll see, 10 minutes in, I think we're going on full Turkish Delight. This is their version of yum, the yum. Ube, and they've been together for what, the past 2-3 to three minutes? We haven't seen much split map play, they're going Apex. for what they want! Scouted, but unfortunately only down onto your name. They toss everything out onto this Frederick and trying to do whatever they can, such as still respecting this distance as far as possible. But he did manage to bring Opus down to an all-time low, in fact, half HP. From this point on, Fimp is pretty much going to be chowing down like a hungry toddler as they are knocking down, knocking the doors on the front base of Evo. The Lord just going to be marching in with half HP left. Fimp 
is not exactly going to be diving in oh. to extend the health of the Lord as much as possible. But what they can do is to whittle down the bottom lane health Blue and the top lane second tier. That just means that all the outer tier turrets are gone. And now with a clean 7.7k lead for the side of him, they're going to hit their next item power spike to try and start threatening inhibitors. Now, Evo on the other hand, right? Keep your eyes on the two main players that are going to change the tide of the fight. And you're expecting uh, Nyom Nim to try to make something happen, especially with the Divine Judgment. But mm -hmm. when we look at the items as well, they're significantly behind. So the only people they can reasonably rely on is going to be Ahi and as well as Opera. Opera to open up the map, try to bait up a couple of spells, but Ahi must come from a flank angle and not a traditional front to front because the deadly catch is pointed in his direction. And as soon as we started the game with a Bane in the jungle in the hands of Kyura, we did say this is going to be a very different Bane from the Kai and Carl TZ show. Then already it is, yes, he's building more towards hybrid and yes it's mm -hmm. physical, physical hybrid. hybrid there's the war axe maybe on his way to a hunter strike he did commit first to the athena's shield so they're showing respect to the farsa showing respect to the harith i'm loving i, I like that this is the way that fireflocks has gone in with their bane jungle now 8.4k ahead 8.6 oh yep yep they're, they're out gunning oh. evo that's my favorite part whenever i see a team not decide you know what i'm gonna greet out with my items i'm gonna go all damage I'm Gonna make sure that they never have an opportunity but actually going defensive when you're ahead is the better play you want to minimize how much gold you give over to evo even if it goes wrong the small little margin of error now became a larger margin of error so they don't really have to care too much about making small little tiny minute mistakes especially since the lord and objectives is ultimately gonna be big and they gotta have to really watch out for noom nim's ultimate this is a good angle coming in from evo this is what they need to do and look at the spacing look at oprah as well but apex spots him out once again they are always after the heads of apex locking him down with no chance at all to fight for this game oprah still relentlessly goes in with the black dragon form as he's already committed to it now that fact that they don't have your name, they know they're gonna have to back off and give this lord over to Fifth. Clean, luminous lord take here. This is a lord that crashes on in and they're not done! Apparently, as now Fim is just gonna be right on onto the purple buff. The entirety of EVO respects the distance with Fim and wants to hold it on within the basis of their walls. Yep, that's two deadly catches we see in a very short period of time. Kura, he's got more than enough CDR to be spamming this ability and Again, it's just tough. It's really, really tough for Evo to actually come back behind because somebody needs to be brave. And in this case, it's got to be Biston. He needs to walk up and show like, yes, I do want to fight. I am willing to sacrifice because at the end of this day, his damage is single target. Yes. Agi needs an opening. Biston needs to be a big boy. He needs to be a big he boy right now. He needs to stand right up, put on a big boy pants and stand right in front of Fib, who is so far ahead that they're allowing Kazue to stand as a frontliner. Can you believe it? I saw that Lord take. The Valentino was standing right in front of everybody. A two-way roll split down onto the lane from the side of Evo. They're trying to defend this two-take, or rather three-way take, with a top lane inhibitor turret already taken down. Fib relentlessly goes down onto Evo with all of the inhibitor turrets destroyed. Fib have got all their avenues and all of their arsenals ahead to bring Evo down whenever the possibility arises. Oh, the Turkish are in your house, Evo. What are Not you gonna enough. do about it? Oh, they're taking their time though. This is good, I think. Again, as you mentioned, playing defensively or at least taking it slow is the right thing to do when you're this far ahead. And especially with the timings as well. We're like 14 minutes into this game. They're not gonna do something crazy here, are they? No. I, it might be a cast the curse moment. Okay, okay, they're gonna back away slowly. No, not yet. That was a wee bit off timing. Oh, wait! Big ultimate as well. The finger coming from the side of Union, but unfortunately, there's not a lot of follow ups coming from the outside. Such as you're still gonna be respecting his sister, as you go for B with Kyura as well as Apex. The entirety of Fib is still not gonna be taken down just yet. The alien runs away with just a sliver of health. However, Evo, they can't hold it down. They still would want to push all of their advantages. Fib backs it off a little bit and realizes that, hey, no name doesn't have a lot of HP left. We are just gonna whittle down all of the lanes and keep our throne intact. Okay, two for one. But they did get Sunshine, so that's some shutdown gold going over. Uh, this did buy Evo time. No, this doesn't buy that much time because, again, it's going to be quite a coin toss, right? Let's look at the replay one more time. How exactly did they catch Sunshine? Because they pulled Apex first and then the turnaround. So, breaking it down, we see Nunami, he finds Apex initially, but that feathered airstrike, especially with the mass chaos that they had, Sunshine gets out of range, thinking that he's going to be safe, but in that back line, he's not exactly the most comfortable. He jumps back oh. into that fight and falls into range of Agi. 
Yeah, he's trying to look for some value despite throwing himself right into the uh, into the pool. It was clear that the call for Fire Flux was to go all in. I think they embraced the fact that Evo was being aggressive, but they missed out on the point that yeah, you're still inside Evo's base. You are down 11k, but it's still Evo's base, and they are very pick off reliant. Again, that's what the Kaja buys for you. Yep. Remember what we talked about earlier, big boy pants. Kind of ironic because Bislot is playing a Leon and generally, generally don't really have the biggest pants in the world. But, but at the end of the day, they need to bait something out of FIMP. And if he's enough of a threat and if he finds the right targets to force it out of FIMP, they might have a chance. Piston haven't really found much dividends, oh, no. but the Fimbit have a very good idea. They are constantly looking out for your name time and time again. And Evo's positioning just doesn't work out so well for them. The Lord goes down to the hands of Fim, and they are ready for this Lord push that will potentially end the game. From minute 3 to minute 16.45, how ironic and how poetic is it that Fimp still stays ahead, maybe now two steps ahead. This is difficult. You saw how Oper tried to save the day, but no, they know exactly what's going on. Fireflux finds your name, and now it's a four-man defense. Oh, no name. It went straight on over to the back line, but it will be able to bring Kazu down. The Lord is holding it on, but the rest of the members from Fimp finishes off the throne. Don't even care about the players. Woo! We gotta slow down here, we gotta slow down. There's so many, I'm expecting this game to go even further, maybe even all three of these games, because let's remember, both of these teams wanted to be on second pick. So, it's one team at a time, let the Turkish take this first game, maybe EVO are able to bounce back once they get that second pick. Looking at how Fireflux and Unity have walked back to their player rooms, it looks like it's just business as usual, stone cold. Literally, so I'm hoping to see a bit of emotion of like, like, yes, that's a nice one, but they understand. Mm -hmm.